you take right? any blame for inflation, you just, Mr. President? I take any blame for inflation? No. Correct. Why not? Because it was already there when I got here, man. Remember what the economy was like when I got here? Jobs were hemorrhaging. Inflation was rising. We weren't manufacturing a damn thing here. We were in real economic difficulty. That's why I don't. Thank you. And that's leadership. Joining me now, recovering investment banker and author of the new book, You Will Own Nothing, the great Carol Roth, who is, well, everyone's familiar with the great Carol Roth on this show. Carol, none of this is Joe Biden's fault, is it? Horrible inflation numbers out today. And Joe didn't do any of this. Well, he's referring back to, you know, when I got here, things were not going well. He meant during the Great Depression when he first got into Congress. So <laughs> to be fair, compared to uh, compared to back then, things are a little bit better. But of course, you know, none of this is his fault. He did not decide to um, put stimulus checks into a supply constrained economy. He did not decide to, uh, you know, kill energy policy. You know, none of this is really his fault at all. Um, and he's done absolutely nothing to fix these supply constraints that we have through labor, through housing, through, you know, energy, <laughs> you know, so on and so forth. So, yeah, no, I, I would just say z zero was his fault. But, uh, you know, again, for those of you who are remembering back before he took the presidency office, he's just remembering a, a different time. Yeah, if it's remembering anything at all. OK, Carol, <laughs> look, look, I hate to even I can't believe I'm starting a sentence this way. But in Joe Biden's defense, <laughs> it's not all his fault. I, I, I have to I have to have this conversation with people on the right all the time that, that we love to pin this all on Joe Biden. The vast quantity of money that was printed before Joe Biden ever walked into office is a huge part of this. Look, you want to shut down your society and just print money as if as if it's never going to matter at all. This is the result of all this. This is the result of lockdowns. It's not that complicated. Yeah, no, this is very true. And I also caveat it because I'm a truth teller. When you had a scenario during COVID, when you decided to shut down a third of the economy and assume that you could just turn it back on, print trillions of dollars, give direct stimulus away, we knew that there was going to be a long tail effect to that. And so the, the wheels were, were set in motion before Joe Biden got there. It's the decisions that he's made since he got into office, which could have made this, um, you know, it, it could have stopped it or it could have made it a, a lot less worse uh, or a lot less bad than it is today. And he decided to just double down on the existing bad policies and add more policies. I mean, the, the first thing he did in office was cancel oil and gas leases. And we know that uh, the cost of, of oil and gas has been a huge contributor to inflation throughout, you know, not just the energy piece of the economy, but obviously, no pun intended, that powers a whole lot of the rest of the economy, including 6,000 derivative products that come from, uh, you know, from oil. So he could have changed it. He chose now not to, and he still chooses not to. I mean, the numbers that came out today, we are still still at 6.5% inflation year over year on top of all of the inflation from last year. And he is not doing anything to change it. He's leaning on the, the Fed that all of their tools can do is crush demand. They can, can try to crush jobs and make things really bad for you, but they're not printing oil, they're not printing labor, they're not printing homes, they're not solving any of those issues that could be done with fiscal policy that Joe Biden refuses to do. Carol, I think a lot of people miss, well, it's not that people lose sight of it. it the news doesn't report it. They love to cover up the fact that on top of today's inflation number, as you just referenced, yeah. this is on top of last year's inflation. We are now at 15% and wages are down. So correct me if I'm wrong, that means the average American, most Americans who aren't in the upper income brackets have a 15% lower quality of life today than they did two years ago. Do I have that right? 
Yeah, less purchasing power for sure. And I would argue, and I think most Americans would argue that it's much more than that because they fiddle with the numbers to make it sound much better than it than it actually is, um, you know, for a, a political perception standpoint and also so they don't have to increase the cost of living adjustments on things like Social Security for as much as they would otherwise. So I think if you talk to the average American, they understand that it's not 15 percent, it's probably 30 or 40 percent which is absolute insanity, and by the way, was entirely predictable. And that's the part that's so frustrating. People like you, people like me, were saying all along, this is going to be the outcome. And these supposed experts told us it wasn't gonna happen, it was gonna be transitory, it was gonna be good for you, you know, bread lines are a great way to meet your neighbor, all of those kinds of things until, you know, now they're at a point in saying, oh, well, you know, it's not that bad or we have it under control. They just aren't being honest. And I don't understand the strategy because people are feeling it in their wallets and in their day-to-day -day lives and Americans aren't stupid, it's insulting. Support the First TV today and get instant access to exclusive specials like Who is Ron DeSantis, The History of FBI Scandals, and America's Worst Presidents. Visit thefirsttv.com support or download the First TV app to become a supporter and start watching today.